Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 32 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series, where we're about to crystallize some liquid crystal. Uh, the last couple episodes we've been toying around with Deep Resonance, a mod I haven't played with in I don't even know how long, but it feels like years, and it's probably been more than that. Uh, Deep Resonance is a really neat mod for generating RF power, and we are at a specific point in our career where we need lots more RF power. It feels like we have a lot, but I really don't. Uh, mostly because uh, we're burning through lava like nobody's business right now. Uh, and, and I know that we're about to start amping up our usage of power. And we've already started hitting some power limits. It's just that I bumped up as much as I could with lava and now we're hitting the limit there. So let's, let's come up with another power generation solution. Also one that's a little bit fun to build. So for that, I started working on deep resonance. And we've got ourselves to a point now where we have a relatively okay-ish kind of liquid crystal. Um, so this liquid crystal, you have, to, you have to spend a lot of resources to purify and make it better. Uh, we've got it at a decent point now where there's a little bit of efficiency involved, which determines the RF per tick that we'll get. And then also a decent amount of strength, which determines the total amount of RF we'll be able to get out of the crystal. The purity is not great, but not terrible. But I just don't feel like throwing more diamonds at it, because diamonds is kind of the way to bump up the purity, and we've kind of bumped it up as far as we can without spending a lot more resources. So, with that said, I'm going to go ahead and turn this liquid crystal into an actual physical crystal and see how it turns out. So to do that, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the valve here and throw down a crystallizer. Now this crystallizer is going to need some power, so I'm gonna hook that up, and then he should start draining liquid crystal out of the tank below him and creating a crystal inside. And look at that, it's already starting to form. How cool is that? I like that little crystal in there, that looks nice. <clears throat> now we're gonna to need to speed this up because I'm impatient, but in a few moments here, that crystal will be fully formed. Oh, wrong one. Oh boy, I, I overdid it. I overdid it. I clicked too much. I clicked too much. Are we choking on power? Uh, not too bad. Not too bad, actually. We're doing okay. Are you not able to output fast enough? I thought you were able to do like 8,000 per tick or whatever. You know what it is? It's probably, it's, it's not that it's not able to output fast enough. This machine just won't accept that much power. But that's okay. Hey, look who's done. My buddy, the resonating crystal. Nice. Cool. So we've got our completed resonating crystal in here. Look at that. It's great. You can feel the latent power present in this crystal. He's got a strength of 25.7, an efficiency of 18.7, and a purity of 86.9. So not great, but not terrible. Yeah, I made that joke. So uh, now we have to worry about radiation. And that is the next problem that we're going to run into. <clears throat> so one of the things I want to do is I want to prepare for the next crystal that we're going to have. And the reason I want to do that is I want to make more filter material. Oh, look, see, look at my wireless. Oh, my wireless crafting grid is out of power. Now that makes sense. That would make sense. This guy does not get an unlimited amount of power. I need to, I need to, I need to come up with a way to keep him charged. Not there yet, but I'm sure we'll come up with something. So in order to do this, uh, first off, we're going to need more filter material. So let's see what we do or don't have to make that happen. More gravel, please, he said. Let's put you away, because I'm not mining right now. Get a smidgen of gravel. At least two stacks should be a good holding point. And uh, let's make sure that this guy's nice and full. And then what I'm going to do is remove the crystallizer and put the valve back. Now just be careful with these valves and, and things, because if you do things wrong, there's a little bit of a void bug right now, and I've reported it to McJady, the mod author, so I'm assuming we <clears throat> get it fixed pretty soon, but we just want to be careful. Okay, so if I do that, and what I like, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to set this guy to a transfer speed of like 200 ticks. So the reason I'm doing this is this will only pull a bucket out every 10 seconds. Um, my hope is that eventually the valve will be faster than this. Now I don't, I don't know that I need to go exactly that far. So maybe we'll do 100 ticks every five seconds. Um, so let's see what happens if I throw some, so we need 27 plus three. Nice. All right, so this guy's transferring pretty quickly. He's staying at the 5,000 mark like we want him to. This guy came down and hit the 35% purity and then got sucked back up into there. And then a few seconds later, this guy is going to do the same. And what will happen um, is he won't be allowed into the tank below 
until he's at 85% purity. So with this automation, it should be pretty cool. I hope that it'll work. And there's a very specific reason I'm doing this. Uh, and that specific reason is I need a lot more spent filters. Um, so what I want to do is make sure I have enough of that. And you know what I might do? Um, maybe what I'll do is amp up this and make him the max speed, which is 8,000. So now he's going to transfer every five seconds. He's going to transfer all that he can. And maybe at this point, I'll bump him up to 200 ticks. So every 10 seconds, he'll transfer it all. Now, is the purifier out of filter material? It pretty much is, yes. So let's get it some more. Let's tick accelerate you. And if what's going in there is at 85% purity, it's just going to drop straight through into the tank below. It's not going to get extracted by my laser IO guy. Yeah, hey, that's pretty cool. I like that. That's that. That should work. I'll take it. And remember, it'll only take 6,000. So yeah, that's good. All right, so we not we got another crystal ready to go when the time comes. And we also got ourselves a healthy amount of spent filter material. All right, so now let's look at deep resonance because when we turn on this generator using this crystal, it's going to generate radiation. And we want to keep that radiation contained. Otherwise, it'll be bad for people, specifically me. Um, and I'm, I'm going to make a back. Well, no, we should have a lot of backups. I'm pretty sure we have frequent backups here. Like backups happen a lot. So I'm not going to worry about backups because, like I said, we've run into a few bugs with the mod. So I hope we don't run into any radiation bugs. But if we do, there's things we can do. So anyway, to contain your radiation, um, there's a couple things we can do. We can make dense obsidian. Uh, now, this is actually pretty expensive. So we should be a little conservative with our dense stuff. And then there's also dense glass, which we can make. Uh, so let's get some nice... Nice glass request here. Give me like a stack. And that should be nice and quick because we've accelerated this as fast as we can, right? I usually like to do a three by three of glass when I'm doing stuff. So we'll have to see. That should work. And then a bit more dense obsidian. I don't know quite how much we're going to be able to get. I think we should keep an eye on our filter material here. Do we feel like 20 is enough? I don't know. I guess we'll find out. Um, so let's find a good place to, to turn this on. And look at this. There's always dirt in this corner here. I don't know what endermen are doing, man. But I'm telling you, they're endermening it up in here. Uh, so let's get a nice laser to clear out a little bit of terrain. Uh, where should we stick this guy? Should we stick him like... I could put him back here. That might not be a bad place. That might not be a terrible place. Because we know we're going to want this lasery stuff back here. And then it would be a little bit further away from my base. Like, technically, it's still going to be... Oh, hello, Mr. Glowy Enderman. Protection 4, multi-shot, and health boost 3. Sounds terrifying. Should I try it? I'm so going to die. How did that not hit him? Somebody explain to me Minecraft hitboxes. Told you I was going to die. I told you I was going to die. <laughs> we knew it was going to happen. I don't know why we're surprised. I mean, we're not. We're not surprised. But still. So anyway, um... So I could throw this back here. Does that sound like a nice place for it? Um, kind of self-contain everything a little bit? Or should I or should I have like a dedicated area for it, maybe a little further away? My problem with it is I don't know that I have a good wireless way of transporting energy right now. Um because there's no uh, there's no flux networks yet in the pack. So we don't have a good long range energy transport. So wherever we build this should be close enough to our base that we can run pipes from the energy generator to the redstone flux cell. Uh, so that's why I'm thinking we put it in here for now, and then maybe in the future we can move it to somewhere more dedicated if we decide to keep using it. It depends. I haven't quite figured out how good this is going to be. We're learning. We're learning together. So let's do that. Let's let's just dig deeper into here, and if we build this correctly, hopefully the, the radiation stuff will work out pretty good. I'm done with that. So let's build this room, and then we'll figure out how much um, we're going to need by way of radiation protection. Is that cool? I'm gonna put you on precision mode real quick. 
So in order to build this reactor, here's what we're gonna need. All right, so watching my own mod spotlight from back in the day, we need a generator controller, a generator part, and an energy collector. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna go ahead and make the radiation monitor. Uh, so that's just gonna need another one of these. So we're gonna need uh, another one of these. I'm just gonna get a bunch of redstone torches. It never hurts to have a few extra. And the clock. Cool. And you can hold this in your hand and see what the radiation looks like. And I think if there's any radiation, it would tell you, but I guess we'll find out together. We're learning. All right, so I'm gonna plop down. Um, let's do this. Let's put the generator here and the generator controller here. I want to try and make this as conservative and like efficient as possible because I want to do my best to not use up a lot of the dense obsidian until we get more of that refined spent filter material stuff. So I think we also will want to place down this and then our nice fancy crystal that we just made goes here and we have an energy collector there. And now we're ready-ish to go. So let's try turning him on. I think I need a lever. Just gonna need another stick. And I think a redstone signal equals energy turns on. Ooh, everybody panic. Sweet. Cool. All right, that wasn't bad. So 3,267 RF a tick. Not bad at all for only 18% efficiency. That would be much higher if we got a higher efficiency crystal. Um, and with that running right there, it just used a little bit of power. Let's see, 99.9% .9 power left. So we have plenty of power left in there. And that filled up very quickly our 50,000 RF support. Uh, sweet. All right, so now what we should do, is there any radiation as well? Not, nothing yet. Maybe radiation isn't implemented yet. That would be nice. I'm going to go on the assumption that it is. But how cool would it be if it wasn't? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but let's build out a nice radiation protection just in case, even if it's not implemented yet, we should be prepared for it to be. Wow, that's very expensive all of a sudden. Yeah, we're going to need a lot more of this stuff. I'm trying to be as conservative as possible. Okay, so we want more dense obsidian. Um, boy, is that, is that, is that just a lot or what? Holy cow. Yeah, we're not even close to having enough here. Oh boy. Okay. Well, that's not great. I'll tell you that much. It is just not great. Um, and I assume you can break reasonably okay. So I think we want to drain the energy out of this guy or the generator behind it. I actually don't know, but I'm going to, I'm going to break. Let's see which one the pipes pipe will connect to. Um, that, that's probably the best question that connects there. It does not connect there. Well, there's your answer. You connect to the generator part. Easy peasy, easy peasy answer. Okay, so we're going to want to route this probably out here-ish. And we're going to want to do our best to maintain, you know, some semblance of radiation protection, right? So we'll probably want something like this. And that. And while that's not perfect, we're just going to have to keep an eye on the radiation and see if it becomes a problem. Uh, and then what we can do, what I'll do is I'll tap into the side of this and we'll feed the pipes pipe into here. Now we're going to need more pipes pipes. Actually, I have one in my inventory, so I could still, but that should be fine. Right? So what I'll do is I'll enable this for blue. So he accepts energy. I'm going to turn you off for a minute. That sounds good. I like that plan. And then all the stuff that we're doing currently will start draining power from our environment. Okay. You know what we could do? I kind of like it being up so that you don't really see it in the end, but...
I just don't know how the radiation works. So it's a little tricky to know for sure if I'm doing, you know, a stupid thing or a smart thing. Um, theoretically, we're going to want, you know, this area blocked off by radiation blocks. So maybe what I should do is just route around here. You know, we could always go one block higher if we wanted to hide this, or we could just fill in the roof. It doesn't matter. Great. Okay, cool. Uh, so that works. How are we for stone out here? We should have a bit. Remember I, uh, I learned that I can silk touch stone? <laughs> yeah, that's what's up. That's good enough for now, right? And then uh, for you, buddy, where's my dark stone? All right, so we're just gonna have to babysit this a little bit as it relates to um, the problems with with uh, with radiation. We're just gonna have to figure it out until we get more dense obsidian. Yeah, radiation's gonna radiation's gonna worry me. We'll see what happens. Um, so how about turning this thing on and off automatically? Does that sound like a fun time? And um, should I test this? Okay, good. I get that back. Well, that's good at least. I'm happy to see that happens. Um, so we want to give a redstone signal to this guy, and that will tell him to turn on, right? That's the plan at least. So did we really have much by way of redstone? Not really, right? We don't have a lot of redstone options right now per se so what i should probably get is just some redstone and some redstone torches now if i ran this right underneath do you think it would activate that's a good question it's a really good question right if we if we stepped it down and it, well it gets tricky right what we could also do is do a redstone torch scenario and we could have the torch relay the power of the redstone through. Not a bad idea. I was trying to avoid that, but I guess we could do it, right? So what we would have is something like... In before Dyer's terrible redstone skills are on display for the whole world to see. I'm not good at vanilla redstone. I'm really, really not. Um, but yeah, we could run something like this. If I had this here, and then we had this here, this would activate that, right? And then we run that into here. Whoop. And then this gets a redstone torch. And that sounds to me like it's gonna work, if I'm not mistaken. Now where'd all my dense, oh, that's right, I had glass here. Yeah, we're gonna want probably I'm wondering, I, I seem to recall that obsidian might help with radiation. So maybe we just fill this in with regular obsidian and then we make, you know, the dents everywhere else eventually. Does that sound like a plan? Let's do that. We'll put as much dents as we can and then we'll make everything else regular obsidian. So a little bit sloppy looking, but not terrible. And like I said, I don't fully know how the radiation leakage occurs and how it works and how the pathing of it all works. So we'll just kind of fill in like a worst case scenario and hope that I'm right about this. Because for all I know, radiation is not even implemented. I don't know. I haven't seen any spike yet, but we really haven't run this thing for very long, have we? Truth. Okay, everybody. Cross your fingers. We're going to give it a shot. So in theory, we can turn this thing on. Sweet. And then that should be charging this guy up. Oh, nope, 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 nope. I know what's wrong. So two things. Um, one, I forgot to click the pipe with a wrench, and two, I forgot to give it an upgrade, because we absolutely want one of those, so that it can do more than a tiny, tiny amount of RF per tick. 
I always forget this this step with pipes. Don't forget to do that. Um, if we break the dense obsidian, it'll be more obvious. Come on. There you go. Cool. And now he can extract 8,000 R of a tick. So in theory, he should be able to keep up, right? Guess we'll find out. Yes, I'm going in there. Yep, definitely keeping up. And how's our radiation situation? Oh wait, it might be on the monitor. Oh yeah, radiation's going up. That's not good. And you are nice and full. That's not bad, okay. See, radiation ain't so bad out here. And see how it's dropping already? So radiation will spread across chunks, but inside it's probably way worse. See how high it is inside this room? Yeah. Yeah, that's what's up. So a little bit's going to get out. And again, the more efficiency, the less radiation. So if you get like a perfectly efficient crystal, you'll have far less radiation. Now there's something I wanted to check out from RF Tools Power, and that is this nifty gadget. The Power Monitor. I'm just curious how this plays out. Uh, but in theory, it will allow you to monitor and send out a redstone signal depending on the amount of power in the targeted block, which I assume is behind it, but we'll find out. Hello. Sweet. Min? Oh, it's a percentage-based system. Okay. Cool. So you, 15, you're losing power. We should do something that's going to cost a lot of RF. off one of these guys for me, would you? Look at all the machines running now. I'm assuming you're at some point going to drop down to 14%. Is that right? Or 14 signal strength? So you have a minimum level. If I made you like 80%. Oh, I see. Okay, hold on. Oh, I see. Hold on. 75 and 85, let's say. Place the input. There. It has a GUI that you can control the power range where it should emit a signal. Redstone is emitted when the power is above the minimum percentage and below the maximum percentage. Redstone is emitted when the power is above the minimum and below the maximum. Okie dokie smokey. So he's at... Do what now? So it's emitted when it's above the minimum and below the percent, the maximum. So when it's in between this range, it emits a redstone signal. So right now it's in between 85 and 100, so it's emitting the signal. If I did this, it would be between, um, okay, yeah, I got you. And if I bump it down a little bit more, eventually it stops until it hits that in between, right? So what we could do is we could say, hey, when you get in between, you know, these values, emit a redstone signal and kick on the generator, right? It's kind of what I'm thinking. Kind of what I'm thinking. And we, I don't want to run this generator too much yet. I want to rely primarily on lava power and then use this generator for the future a little bit. Um, but in theory, once we drop below 90, if I make it 95, is it cool? Yes, 95. So once we drop below 95%, so 10% would be 2.4 million, right? So 5% will be 1.2 million. So once we drop below 22,800, it should start emitting a redstone signal, right? I think, I think, I guess we're about to find out, right? You already made that? Killing me, Smalls. I don't think I wanna to go too crazy with burning resources just to burn power, but yeah, we're almost there. 22,925, we'll be back in a minute. All right, so in theory, once we hit 22,800, Oh, he's already on. Okay, cool. I worry that works for me. So he's already on. 
All right, so we could use this to kick on the reactor when we need them to, and then turn off when we don't need them no more. Eh? Could be fun. So let's let's do that. Let's use wireless RF. So if we look at RF tools, um, there's the redstone receiver. We're gonna need two of these bases, but the redstone receiver and transmitter. These are a pair of blocks that work in tandem to transmit wireless redstone signals. So we want one receiver and we want one transmitter. Okay. And the way this works is the transmitter will send a redstone signal. So I'm gonna place that in the world. I think we can rotate it with any wrench or any-ish wrench. There you go, okay. Uh, and now if I click on this guy with the that dude, boom, he'll set the channel to one. So you can see on the tooltip here, this has channel one. This guy is also gonna be channel one. Um, you can have multiple channels. I don't know if there's a limit. I assume there's some kind of limit, but it's probably one that's hard to hit. Okay, what we can do is we can pop over to here. Now remember, when this thing gets a redstone signal, he's going to turn on, right? Um, so we kind of want to reverse that. We kind of want to double reverse that, right? Because we want him to emit a redstone signal when he needs power. So when he, that might already be what's happening, right? So he emits a redstone signal when he needs power. So he should be emitting it right now. So we want him to turn off the redstone signal when he needs power. So what we're gonna want probably do the redstone-y contraption -y bit down here. Maybe we should do this with, uh, I have an idea. Let's do this with, uh, with uh, Super Circuit Maker. I think we got some super circuity things that I never moved over here. But we could absolutely do this, right? Wouldn't that be cool? Glowstone exciter and miniature lamps and we don't need mo most of that. Uh, what we would do is set up a nice little andish gate. And we could always do like a toggle gate and we might do that later, right? But for now, let's make sure that you're keeping a redstone signal on because I don't want any kind of activation until we really need this thing on. You know what I mean? I don't want I don't want anything to be causing the redstone activation just yet. So if I did this, then I could break this and we'd be fine, right? We technically don't even need that anymore. So what if we um let me go into shrink mode too, because shrink sounds like a fun use case for this. I feel like shrink constantly forgets my settings. But it might be any anytime I update the pack. But what if we put a super circuit maker dude here, okay? And we used a redstone signal coming in from back here and we want our screwdriver. You... Oh, you can click and drag, that's cool. Today I learned, that's even better. And then connect that out, right? And connect that so that it's an input. So now if we placed this redstone here, he would be emitting a redstone signal so this is like a master cutoff, right? When this lever's on, you're not allowed to run at all. There's nothing you can do. Um, then what we're gonna have is this. And I'm gonna try the redstone receiver. Let's see, in theory, this guy should be emitting a redstone signal. Shouldn't he? Shouldn't he be, I would think? Yes, yes you should be, sir. There you go, let's see if he's emitting one now. Yep, he is. Sometimes that wrench rotate thing doesn't behave super well. That's all I'll say about that. Cool, so he's currently saying I need power. Um, now we wanna invert this guy's signal, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove this and replace it with a torch. And then we're gonna screwdriver it so that he's accepting the power from the torch. Cool. 
So now if I were to turn off the master control, what'll happen is it'll disable this redstone signal, turning off this line. This redstone signal is saying I need power and it also turns off this line. As soon as the power is fulfilled, this redstone signal will turn off, which will turn on the torch, which will turn off the reactor. Am I overcomplicating this? I don't think so. So let's turn this off. And turn this off, because this is a master. Right, perfect. And then in theory, our cell should be filling up. And once it gets to a certain threshold, he no longer needs power, and he'll turn off this redstone signal. Yeah, see, look, he's filling up. Nice. Cool. Once we get to whatever threshold I set, he should turn off. <gasps> he just did. See that? See that? He just turned off. Cool. And then when power comes down again, he'll turn back on. And now he's going to toggle back and forth, which I never like. I don't like my reactors to do that. I want it on for a bit and then off for a bit. Um, now what I can also do is activate one of my Magna dudes. So let me get rid of this. But this is working. But I do this, and that keeps us at power. And what we can do now, this is my favorite part, is we've now created an overflow system. What happens is if we are using so much power that my lava can't keep up, this guy kicks on to give us an extra boost. And then once we're done using that stupid amount of power, the lava goes back to maintaining our system. So lava is our primary power, and this is our secondary power, which I like because this generates radiation. Not all that much because I encapsulated it in a nice friendly room, uh, but inside the room there's some radiation, that's for sure. How's that sound? I think that's pretty cool. Like, I dare say that's pretty cool, right? Uh-huh. Now tell me something, does this affect that? It does not. Good. That's what I wanted to hear. That does not affect that. All right, neato burrito. Uh, so, stone. Yeah, is good. What do you guys think? I think it's cool. So that way, if we ever run into a situation where we're really choking on power, we now have a backup generator that we can kick on, right? I think that's cool. And I'm pretty sure these guys need to be sitting on solid blocks, so I'll leave those like that for now, but we might change it up later. And I'll keep one magmatic dynamo running, and if we run into a problem where we're just not producing enough power with one, we will kick on the second, kick on the third, and then eventually rely on that. So that seems pretty cool. So that's not bad. I think what we're going to do is increase our deep resonance power gen in the future. I think this is enough to hold us over for the foreseeable future. What we can do is now is start amping up our tech getting more and more into like, you know, advanced stuff. And then, um, you know, not worry about power for a little bit, but at some point we're, that's not gonna be enough power. At some point, that's not gonna be enough power. And we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. And what that'll mean is better crystals. And then at some point, even the best crystals won't be enough power. We'll have to cross that bridge when we come to it, All right? But for now, I think that's pretty good. All right, so Daryl 20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. We'll come back next time and take use and advantage of all this power. We're going to continue automation with refined storage. We're going to continue to tick up through tech. We have lots of mods we haven't even looked at yet. Uh, some magic, some technical, and uh, we have lots to do. So for now, why don't you just, I don't know, take it easy.